This week's video is sponsored by Vero. Well, good morning guys, hope you're all doing well and welcome to Hermitage Castle. Now this is a place we've actually passed numerous times on our way up the west coast of Scotland before. And we're headed, actually heading over to Northumberland today, but we came up via Langham and through the Scottish borders. So this was only seven miles out of our way. So I thought it was definitely worth coming and checking it out. And it's an absolutely beautiful old castle and I'm sure we can make some sort of shot here. So we're going to have a bit of an explore around, see what the castle has to offer and then see if we can compose a shot with it. But yeah, I think it's an interesting first shot, really nice place to visit and it's really quiet. We're the only ones here today so far, so we're going to make the most of that while we've got it. So we'll get set up, find something to shoot, find an angle on this place and I'll start to talk you through it. So the more I'm looking at this location, we've spent a bit of time walking around it. I think it's going to be one of those kind of places we have to return to, to get a shot. We've got lots of metal fencing all the way around the castle, which is a real shame. On top of that, there's, I've got a branch over on this left-hand side, and this, this area is actually the only place we can kind of get a shot from, because that metal fence runs the whole way around that castle. So we're limited to this corner, and because of that, We've got this branch hanging over, so to get a shot, I would probably have to clone that out. I've got a big um, sign that I'm going to have to clone out. There's a picnic table that I would have to clone out, and then obviously that fence. So there's quite a lot of work to do. I think the area has potential for a shot, and it's definitely worth a return visit when, hopefully, when all that fencing's been removed, because you've got all these hills surrounding us here, and I think this as a foreground element with those hills as a nice backdrop would make a really interesting image. So yeah, definitely somewhere to return to. Right guys, just want to interrupt this video to tell you a little bit about Vero and why I really like it as a platform for photography and for us sharing our work in a big community of people. So what I want to do is actually show you what I'm looking at and show you my Vero account and why I like it so much. So I'll just bring it up now and I'll actually take you to my profile page. And what you should see is all my work in a really nice feed. If I click on my one of my images and it's a landscape or a panorama, I can view it in that aspect ratio and it looks absolutely beautiful. And that goes for any aspect ratio image that I, if I put a square crop up, it's gonna look the same. If I put a 16 by nine crop, you're gonna actually see it how I intended you to view it. Now, the other thing I really love about Vero is, is the chronological feed. So anybody that I, that I follow, I will then see. I don't get flooded with adverts. I don't see work from people that I don't want to see. I just see, what I want to see basically and it's such a breath of fresh air that. The other thing as well is the fantastic community of people on there. I've noticed that unlike any other platform that I've been use using recently, the engagement is really positive. You get lots of good positive feedback. People are engaging and talking about images and that's again such a massive breath of, breath of fresh air to see that happening. So with that in mind, what I want you guys to do is I'm going to give you a hashtag that I've been sharing in amongst um, my community, and that's hashtag woodland, water and wilderness. And when I view that, I'll be able to see your images. So share your landscape images, your water images, anything like that, and we can start engaging as a community. Thanks very much, guys. So guys, we're still heading away across towards Hethpool. And uh, this last few weeks, we've actually been looking for some of these yellow fields, the oilseed rape, because 
they, they're so beautiful when they're illuminated by the sun. They're so bright and vivid. And today we've got some beautiful dark clouds and everything behind. So we've actually managed to find a place where we've been actually looking for somewhere where there's a tree in the in middle of a field or something like that. Something to add a little bit of interest to the frame. But actually here there's a couple of shots that work. I've got some trees off in the uh, distance there. In fact, let me press record on the back of here so you can see what I'm looking at. There we go. So, as you can see there, we've got some a row of trees off in the distance. Now, I've isolated four of them. There's a, a couple of issues I'm going to have to deal with in post. There's, now we're speaking of posts, there's actually two telegraph poles in between two of the trees. So, those are going to have to be cloned out. Also, on the horizon line, I've got either it's another telegraph pole or it's another part of a tree sticking up above just to the right hand side of the frame there which you should be able to see and that's quite distracting as well so I'm going to remove that as well but those are the only elements that are really distracting obviously we've got this cloud cover at the minute so I'm waiting for the uh, the cloud to come out of the way because I want the whole scene to be illuminated I got a couple of shots before and and those trees were actually in shade and it didn't have the quite the same appeal with it but this seems to be working quite well so I've I've got that row of trees centered as best as I can in this square format here I'm shooting a stop under I've also got a polarizer on it as well to kind of make the most of those clouds back in the uh, in the distance there and what I'm doing is I'm shooting f16 and my focus point is on the first third and with doing that, what's happening is it's it's actually making the foreground elements of those yellow flowers blur out. And then as it goes off into the distance, it actually gets sharper. And I think that looks really quite nice. So I'm going to grab that shot now. Now that we've got uh, even light across the whole scene. And I'll just check what that looks like. And yeah, that's looking nice. Just again, just make sure nothing's blowing out. No, it's great, that. It's spot on. So hopefully I'll pop that shot up for you now and then I'll show you the next shot further down the road here next. Now here again I'm using a square crop again, I'll just press record on the back of here again so you can see what I'm looking at. Square crop again, but what I like about this scene, I've moved a little bit further down the road. Obviously I've got no trees in the shot at all, it's all just about the contrasts in colours. So I'm using the uh, oilseed rape, the yellow in the, uh, in the lower section of the frame and then it goes to the dark green and then it goes yellow and then we've got sky. And I just think it's really simple and really effective. I'm using a polarizer again just to um, saturate that sky. You'll see what happens when I turn this polarizer. You can see how light that sky is. And when I turn that polarizer, it darkens the sky and gives it lots of uh, detail there. And it also making, makes it just pop that little bit more. Now what I'm doing, as you can see, is if I just look through there, you can see that I've got my focus point almost in the middle of the frame. And the reason for that, again, is I don't want it sharp from front to back. I want to kind of give it a bit of a transition into it. So the foreground um, flowers are going to be blurred and out of focus, and then it's slowly going to transition sharp again. So I'll just grab that shot now. Exposing for about a stop under again because when the sunlight hits these flowers, it's really quite bright. So it's just to be on the safe side more than anything. I am at ISO 100, F16, and at an 80th of a second somewhere around there because there's a little bit of movement on this as well. So yeah, just grabbing the shot as and when. Making sure that um, I'm actually getting it when there's full sun on the fields themselves because it's not really working if there's kind of parts of shade in it. So yeah, just waiting for the light to happen and when it does and I've got an even exposure right the way across it, I'll pop the shot up for you.
So guys, we've finally reached the destination where we've been heading for all day. And it's lovely down in here. We've got some nice light coming into this gorge. There's a lovely section of rapids with a bridge above it. Now I think we're gonna have a few issues in that really I think because there's sky above that bridge, we're gonna have to kind of lower the frame almost down on top of the bridge and that might look a little bit constrained. So it might be a case of waiting till this sun moves further around in the day and, and provides a bit more interest above it. But there's actually no way of kind of um, separating the two, if you know what I mean. There's no, there's no way of getting that sky out of the shot altogether. So we're gonna have to work with what we've got there. There's a few lovely little patterns and shapes in the rocks. There's ferns in the rocks and everything. So that might be something we can photograph as like an, a detail shot. There's the lower section of these, this little canyon as well, which goes down river which looks quite nice as well. You're getting reflections of the grass and everything in the pools. So that might, might be something we can work with. It's just a case of walking around, seeing what there is, seeing what we can work with. But I think there's gonna be something here definitely. And it's a beautiful valley that we've come down. It's called College Valley in Northumberland. Absolutely stunning. Um, lovely clouds as well. So I'm hoping later in the day we can find some sort of landscape shot as well, as well as some of these sort of more close up intimate shots. But we'll see what we can find and then get set up and show you what I'm working with. Right guys, so I'll just press record on the back of here. I hope you can see me by the way. I'll just press record on the back of here. So what we've got is this gorge coming down with these series of cascades coming down into this lower pool down here. And um, it's a really pretty scene, but what I'm having to be aware of is I'm, I want to get myself across in a position where I'm not cutting out any of the flow of the water. So I want to be able to see that and follow its path all the way down the frame. Now I've tried a couple of different frames here and as I was explaining before, you can see all the sky above me there. And I think what I'm gonna to have to do is just work with that. There's a couple of things I've tried. You can see there's quite a lot of rock on the right hand side and also on the left. So if I switch into a one by one aspect ratio now, you'll see that that eliminates a lot of those rocks on either side. And I think maybe the square crop works a little better in that way because there's quite a lot of rock on either side which isn't particularly interesting or important in the frame. So I'm thinking I might stick with the square crop for this one. You can see I've got sky above and that's because I don't want to restrict the top of the frame too much. If I bring it down on top of that bridge, I think it's gonna to look too tight. So I'm just gonna to have to work with that bit of sky above me. The sun is now above me right here. So it's kind of casting light on the mosses and everything in this gorge. Um, that's really, really nice. It would be nice if that sun was further back so I can actually get some of the, the glow of that light coming through in that white space behind there. And I think I might be able to get around that either by doing it in post or by using the uh, black mist filter to kind of blow those highlights out and at least add a little bit of glow in the background there so it's not quite as distracting to the eye. But I'll just, uh, I'll grab this shot. Now what I'm doing here is, I want around about a quarter of a second, but I've been doing a quarter of a second, third of a second, fifth of a second to see what works best for the water. I'm taking all of those shots because the last thing you want to do is get back and find that there's a shot that you did that you probably would have preferred in a slightly different shutter speed. So I'm taking on all of it to be on the safe side. Just grab another one. So I'm at a 125 ISO, F16 at a quarter of a second at the minute. And if this shot turns out all right, I'll pop it up now for you.
So we've actually moved on from the College Valley now because as you can see, the light's gone really flat. And to be honest, there was only really the gorge down there that was gonna work for the time being. So we've headed over the hills now, I'm heading back towards the A1. And uh, you can see, maybe see off in the distance down there is Holy Island down there. And it's, it's just gone really flat, the lighting. We've come to this kind of uh, overlook, which is like a crag side. There's lots of rocks and shapes. There's some heather over there. So that's gonna look really fantastic when it blooms. So it's one of those places that I think we're gonna kind of bank for future and come back to when the conditions are better, when obviously when this heather's in bloom and obviously when we've got better light because we've kind of been here for about 10, 15 minutes now, but it's, it's not even looking like the light is going to change at all. Sometimes you've just got to make a decision with these places. Is it worth hanging around or is it worth moving on? Because it's so flat, there's absolutely no sign of any light coming through at all. All we can see is rain off in the distance back over that way. Um, there is some texture and detail in the clouds that way, which could be quite interesting. But these rocks themselves, there's no actual light on them at all. And I think it kind of needs that. It needs some sort of depth something to kind of bring the eye in and if there's if it's all just flat if the only thing you've got going on is interesting sky and nothing on the foreground i just don't think that image is going to work so i think it's going to be a case of moving on seeing if we can find something else on the way back down now but uh, yeah i think this is definitely a place worth coming back to